Hey guys, it's Doc. And um, today we're getting ready to head out. This is day number three that we've been up here uh, running our dredges and doing some testing on the mats. And uh, we're getting ready to head up to uh, the creek in a little while. But um, I wanted to, before we sort of got started on this whole thing, I, I really wanted to stress what we're doing up here. And that is, is we've been running all kinds of different configurations um, on our dredges. And it, our dredges are a little bit different because they're more shallow, smooth, flat water dredges. So it's more like a high banker run. But um, one thing that I did want to point out is one thing that this sort of brought us back to was the realization that you really need to have two things. Number one, you need to have faith in your, in your sluice box and the way it's set. And so the only way to do that is really through two things. Number one, you have to test it. And number two, you have to test it to the extremes. And when I say the extremes, I mean extremes both ways. I mean the extremes high water flow and low water flow. Because what we have is an active exchange matting, um, a lot of people, this, this goes against typically everything that's in your soul about um, capturing gold, which is a lot of people want to calm everything down. Um, they want to slow it down because they think gold is going to get by. And what they don't understand a lot of times is that when you do that with an active exchange mat, the mat simply fills up. So you, if you have grooves on your mat and you're running, the, you're running your mats, especially this is especially true on the UR mat, not necessarily the scrubber. It is on the scrubber, but it's more pronounced on the UR. If you have a groove in there and if you start running, if that groove is full and then you run, what's going to happen to the material? It's going to simply pass over it. Same thing, whether you have half inch expanded metal on top of it or you're running your mats alone. And so what ends up happening is people say, okay, well, I'm going to run 3,000 or 4,000 GPH over the mat. I'm going to do it at a real high one and a half or two inch pitch. But what they're not doing is they're, they're concentrating too much on flow rates and they're concentrating too much on pitch. And what you really have to do with these mats is you really have to learn how to read these mats. That's the first thing you're going to have to be able to do. And the only way to do that is to push the mats to the extreme. And when I say the extreme, I mean the extreme. If you do not go to the extreme on these mats to try them and to test them, they will fail on you. Because what you'll do is, you'll do what the common mistake that everyone does, is you'll run it and you say, oh, I did a test and I have gold on my tailings. So what you're going to do is you're going to slow it down. You're going to slow it down. And that's, that's what happens is your channel is either this full or maybe it's this full and the material isn't getting a chance to drop in and being exchanged and work with the other materials that have a much lower specific density so if you're this is this is something that I think was a real eye-opener even for me again was we pushed the mats I tried to get to the mats to the point where I saw no material in them I mean when I was running them I was running them completely bare when I stopped, that channel was maybe had that much material in it. It looked pretty much empty. And when I did my clean out, guess what I found? I found a bunch of gold and I found a bunch of fine gold, minus 50 and minus 100. Now, was I possibly losing some fine gold? Maybe so, running that extreme. But I got to tell you, <laughs> it, it's worse the other way. When you slow them down, it just fills up and all the material just runs right over it. There's nothing happening. So the number one rule with our mats that I want you to do, and this really applies to the UR mat, but also to the scrubber mat, is I want you to push it to the point where nothing is being held in the mat. Now I know that sounds crazy, but I want you to push it to that point. I want it so fast. I want you to run these mats so fast that they're absolutely bare. And then what I want you to do is slowly, slowly decrease it to the point where you see those channels that when you shut down, those channels are only about half full, three quarters full. You do not want those channels 100% full. If you're running and they're 100% full and you shut down they they're 100% full, you're running too slow. Especially if you shut down you see a whole bunch of light, fine material in there, it, it, it's not exchanging out. So. That's one of that's that's as we go forward, and I'm going to show you some of the stuff. This really relates to what we're doing. 
We've changed the mats around. We've been doing expanded. We did riffles on top of that. Um, we even put some miner's moss in there. And we did all kinds of tests. And the best runs that we had is when we got the mats smooth and fast and ran nothing but mat in it. They're the best runs we had. Um, and the way that I tell my best runs is I know I'm going to catch big gold, but I'm looking for the minus 50s, minus 100s, and even minus 200s. And when I see that, I know if I'm catching minus 50s and minus 100s, I know I'm going to be catching the larger gold. So that's uh, the main thing I want to stress on this is when you run your mats, I want you to run it as high as absolutely possible. Again, that's why a lot of people have trouble with the, with the UR mat. They try and put UR mat in a stream sluice, and you just can't get that velocity. So we've got that, the new medium velocity mat coming out. We're going to be running tests on it next week, and it'll probably be a completely different um, run system. But it'll be fun to check that out, and we'll post that up too. So we're going to take you out there and show you what we're doing. Hey guys, it's Doc, and uh, we're out here on day three, and again, we've been fine-tuning these mats, and we've been running some tests on them. Uh, again, this is, the, this is the philosophy of going to the extreme and having your mats completely empty, and then tuning it down to the point that you're catching all your gold. And I'm going to show you what I've done. What we've done is a little test. So I've got UR into the header box, it goes to scrubber, and then it goes to bare UR. That's it, plain mat. At the end of each one of these sluices, we've put a 12-inch section with miner's moss and expanded. It's hitting it, it's coming over it, and it's running it's catching a lot of heavies. It's catching a ton of black sand in there. But what I want to show you is I want to show you how we've got that set up. <clears throat> so we just took the sides off of this thing. So you can see I've got UR under the header box, comes down, I've got scrubber for about a third of the way. And then it's all blank you are. And then we come down and I've got side rails holding this in. And we've got miner's moss with expanded on it. And you can see that there's a bunch of black sand. There's a bunch of black sand caught in here. They're really active. I mean, this was really active. I was watching it the whole time. Um, there's a lot of good heavies in there. But here's what I'm going to do is we're going to take this lower section... We're going to take this lower section and we're going to pan it out and test it separately and then test the upper mats as well. So we've got about an, a 45 minute run to an hour run on these four inch dredges. We're going to run this. We're going to clean out just that section of it. Then we're going to clean out the rest of the mat. So far, so good because I just test panned uh, the, other, the other one and I panned it down. So this is out of the miner's moss. Again, there's a ton of black sand. I panned it real carefully. And I saw... You can see this is... But this is out of the miner's moss at the end of the sluice. And there's one little piece of about 50 in here somewhere that I found. So now I'm going to do the rest of that mat. Okay guys, so now I'm test panning here and um, this is, I test pan that uh, insurance piece of miner's moss and expanded metal at the very end of our sluice and we found one piece of minus 50 in it. So now what I've done is I've cleaned up the rest of the mat and I'm going to show you this is a 45 minute run with just scrubber mat and you are bare. Nothing on it. Very high water flow super high velocity, very little cons. Matter of fact, the, the huge portion of scrubber mat had about the same amount as that one little 12 inch section of miner's moss and expanded. So here we go. So I'm going to do this kind of in the shade if I can. I'm doing it one handed. But you can already see, you can already see the gold in there. I'm trying to get it a couple different ways. I'm just blowing through this right now. Ooh, there's a bunch more up there. A bunch of 50s. Like I said, I'm just blowing through this pan real quick. But that's some pretty looking color there. 
And it's kind of hard to see all that fine stuff in there, but there's 50s and 100s, there's big chunks, there's everything. So that's, that's a phenomenal test. <laughs> if you get your mats tuned right, that's the key to it. There's bird shot. Look at the bird shot up in there. There's bird shot, there's garnets. There's a bunch of fines in here. But that, to me, again, we wanted to show that if you tune your mats right, look at all that bird shot. It's amazing. If you tune your mats right, it's going to work for you. There's a good shot of some fines. And that stuff is uh, minus 30 to minus 50s and 100s right in there. So again, what we're doing is we're test panning out here in the field. We have a safety safety part with miner's moss at the very, very end of our sluice, running nothing but bare mats, extremely high velocity. When I shut down, the UR channels are only about half full. The water's screaming through there. We had almost zero losses into the miner's moss. So I had one piece of 50, and I probably saw just in the test pan, this was three or four scoops out of that mat, I probably saw probably 50 to 100 pieces of gold in here. I got a bunch more left in there. It's a phenomenal run. So again, we were even having problems tuning these machines the way that they're designed, and now we've got them tuned in perfect. That's the final test. I'm not losing any gold. I'm catching all the mats. We're ready to roll. So that's exciting. Hey, guys. Um, for once, I'm not diving today, but I have my wetsuit on because it's been raining and it's kind of cold. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over and show you the machines running. Uh, we got Rick and David, they're diving. and They're new to diving, but they're taking to it really well. I'm kind of proud of them. They're done, doing a good job. But I'm going to show you driving, uh, showing them diving, and I'm going to show you the system we got set up. And uh, we've got that emergency sort of test piece of miner's moss and expand it at the end. Again, it's catching a bunch of black sand in that miner's moss, a bunch of heavies. Matter of fact, that 12 inches of miner's moss is catching more than the entire mat is of heavies. But we're going in and we're testing it and we're finding almost zero gold. We're finding one, maybe two pieces of minus 50 gold in it. And we're finding a bunch. We're finding hundreds of pieces of gold up in the mats. Completely bare, running really fast. And that's what I want you to watch. I want you to watch how fast this water is running. Everybody makes the mistake of going the opposite direction, slowing the mats down. And if you haven't taken your mats to completely bare, then you have not tested them the right way. I can't stress that enough. So I'm going to walk over I'm going to show you that real quick. Okay guys, so we just did a shutdown and here's what I want you to understand. We're getting ready to clean this mat out, but I want you to understand what the mat looks like and how bare it is. So, there it is. There's my finger and you can see that those things look pretty bare. 
Some areas will be more bare than others. I'm pulling it down, but that looks like a piece of gold right there. But I want you to see that mat and how bare it is. Some areas will have more heavies, some areas will have less. It's just the way the map rolls. I'm trying to get that. It's actually a little piece of gold in there. But that's, that's how bare our mats are. That's how bare our mats are. And we're having zero losses on these things or we're catching 99% up in that mat. Hey guys, real quick, it's raining again so I don't want to leave the camera out here too long. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, again, we've been running this miner's moss and expanded metal at the end of our sluice as an insurance catch. I panned it out, had a ton of black sand, probably four cups of black sand in that miner's moss, that hog moss that we have. Um, it's at the end of the sluice, and here's, here's what I panned it down to. And I'm gonna try and get it where there's not a lot of sun here. And I went through here, and I have seen zero gold in this emergency sluice. There might be one little piece, but I'm not seeing any gold. I'm not seeing any gold in that expanded metal. I'm not seeing any gold in that expanded metal with, uh, with that moss over it. So now I'm going to pan the other one out. This is the second test of it. Hey guys, it's Doc, and um, it's late. It's probably about 7.30, and uh, back up here at the cabin. I left them running the one four inch dredge and so I hadn't seen the con so I wanted to check it. So I'm going to show you. I've already gone through quite a bit of it but um, two days in the four inch dredge we only had three gallons of concentrates out of running those mats and we're just running bare mats. Straight UR and straight scrubber. Nothing on it. Not even expanded. Nothing. Um, and I knew they were on a pretty good spot but I wanted to show you. This is just one. I'm going to show you. Um, what I panned out just out of one little scoop and I'm just dumping it right back into the bucket because I'm gonna go over it again. But um here's the cons. I've gone through some of it. Again it was about three gallons and this is I took about I've taken about two scoops just going through it real lightly. And I wanted to show you this is pretty cool. Now this is running just straight mats and I'm gonna blow through this real quick. And I'm just taking two scoops, real quick speed panning it, and then putting it back. But you can see that piece over there. And I've got gold down here too that I'm blowing through. Nice little piece. That's some pretty gold there. You can see it all in there. Bunch of finds. That's a pretty nugget. You can see the big chunkers, and then you can probably see some of the fines in there. That's some pretty stuff. Put my finger next to it so you can get some perspective on it. But again, this is two scoops out of there. That's all I'm doing, two scoops at a time. And um, that's some real pretty gold. I'm just blowing through gold here left and right. That's a pretty little nugget there. Inside that. Here's a good example. Let's see if, you can, if I can get that for you. You can probably see the bigger stuff, which is 50s. 
and then there's one hundreds and even maybe two hundreds right next to it, right at the tip of my finger. Bunch of bunch of fine gold. Look at that wire gold with the red tip right there. Don't forget now. <laughs> I still got a ton sitting inside that bucket. Fifties, some hundreds. That's a pretty little nugget. That is just too pretty. And all I'm doing. Dumping all the gold back in the pan. But again, this is using just the mats. Just scrubber and you are alone running in that forage. And again, we really can do that. We can run um, we can run just scrubber and you are because we're not dealing with any rocks. We've got a nice wide sluice. We've got an 18-inch wide sluice on a 4-inch. It's about 6 feet long. And uh, the water's flattening out. Good water speed. Um, but uh, just, it's amazing. Tons of 50s, bunch of 100s, plus the chunky gold that we're finding too. So, like I said, this is one bucket that has about three gallons. That was two scoops of it. There's a bunch of gold in here. I've already panned through a bunch of it. But um, I've got another whole bucket of cons in the truck. And I'm guessing so far we probably have a, close to a quarter of an ounce already with between what we've run over a period of about three days so that's not bad so I'm real happy with that and uh, we got more to come so hold on.